All right, hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Okay, we're back with macroeconomics today. Okay, I'm going to be covering uh, the next part of macro. Okay, we've gone through circular flow of income in the previous video. So this one, I'm going to be moving on to aggregate demand. So AD in short, okay? Um, throughout this video and the next few videos to come, but I'll, I'll just be using AD, okay? I won't be saying uh, aggregate demand and, and all because uh, it's very long. Okay, but um, essentially, this is kind of like the, uh, essentially the most important concept of the entire macroeconomics that you need to know. Okay, so this part and the next video, AS, um, is what you're looking out for. Okay, this is basically your demand and supply of macro. Um, you have already learned demand and supply in micro. I've already gone through on this channel, so I'll go check it out. So macro is just kind of like uh, looking at the entire economy. So when you look at AD, you're looking at the demand for an entire economy. When you're looking at AS, you're looking at the supply for an entire economy. Okay, so jumping right in, part two. Okay, definition. So what's the definition of AD? Okay, it is very simply the demand for domestic goods and services and combined demand by all economic agents. So very, very simply, this book definition just means that um, it is the demand for an entire economy. That is what it means. So it is the plan um, total of, this is not spending, okay, it's spending. So it's the plan total spending by the four different sectors in the economic, uh, in the economy. Oh, I've got a lot of spelling errors here, very bad, okay. So economy at a given price level. So it is, um, when you look at this definition, it's kind of like putting the graph into words, sort of, okay? Um, you're just looking at the total spending by the four different sectors. I've already gone through what the four different sectors are in the previous video on your circular flow of income. So just go back and take a look at that if you need to. Okay, so moving right into what AD is. Okay, AD is defined as a certain amount of um, expenditures and earnings combined. Okay, so it is your C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So first up, you have got C. C stands for consumer expenditure or consumption expenditure. Essentially, this is what consumers um, spend. Okay, so it's the desired spending by households on domestic consumer goods and services. So when you look at consumption, you're always looking at um, domestic goods and services, okay, which is why there is another part later on called imports and exports. Okay, that is where it dies into the foreign sector. So consumption itself, as, as we have gone through in the circular flow of income, okay, consumption is only for domestic goods and services. Okay, next one. Next factor we have is investment expenditure. So this is the plan net spending by firms okay, on producer goods. So it's essentially how much a firm invests um, into an economy to kind of produce more goods. So those in turn will generate greater national income as well. Okay, next one you have is government spending, okay, our uh, government expenditure. So it's the purchasing of goods and services, mainly your merit goods, um, infrastructure, okay, and investment goods, okay, by the government. So this is uh, anything that a government does to invest in the economy to help it grow. So investing in public goods, investing in merit goods, okay, that is what invest uh, governments do. Next one is exports, okay, exports in macro is um, known as X, okay, we call it like as in like literally just X, okay. So export earnings are basically expenditure by foreigners on domestically produced goods. So export earnings, okay, export um is always outside of the economy. Imports like kind of like in, right? So it comes in to the economy. Which means that export earnings are generated from our own domestic goods that are being sold overseas. So things like our microchips that we produce, okay, those come in the form of export earnings. Okay, we'll learn more about exports and imports in balance of payments later on. Uh, you've got import expenditure as well. So it is the expenditure on foreign produced goods and services by households, firms, and the government. So if you look at the formula, right, essentially the formula is saying that aggregate demand okay, is made up of your C, consumer spending, or consumer expenditure, plus I, plus G, plus X, minus M. Which is why you're only looking at domestic, okay? AD always refers to the um, aggregate demand of a domestic economy, so only the people that belong to that country. Which is why we're taking out imports. Okay, we are minusing out imports because imports are foreign goods. Okay, they are never domestic goods. Okay, domestic goods are only exports. Imports are actually foreign goods. So we're taking that out so that AD only represents all the demand that it is for our economy, our domestic economy itself. Okay, so in general, this is how the AD diagram looks like. Exactly the same as your demand curve. So it is always downward sloping. Um, I, I won't go through, you I mean, you don't really need to know all, all the details about why it is downward sloping or that kind of things. Okay, but essentially, um, it is the same meaning, I mean, the same explanation as your demand curve. Okay, so go check out the demand video, okay? Um, I'll leave a link in the top corner of the screen. Okay, and then you will be able to learn more about um, the why, why, why the demand curve looks like this. So essentially, when your general price level, okay, it's always GPL 
is your y axis. Your x axis is real GDP. Okay, real GDP. I'll go through GDP in the, in the next few videos to come. Uh, real GDP is basically your national income. Okay, we've gone through this in circular form of income, your national income identity. Okay, uh, real GDP is basically the gross domestic product. Okay, so it's the national income, the national output of an economy. So essentially, you can look at GDP as your quantity. And general price level would be your price if you're looking at micro terms. So when your general price level increases, okay, at the same income level, which means at the same GDP level, let's say over here, Okay, what happens is that um, the same income can buy less goods and services. Okay, if your general price level increases up this way, your GDP will fall. Okay, this is uh, along the, the AD curve. Huh? So this is because of a fall in purchasing power. Hence, your real income will fall because it moves leftwards. Hence, this shows the inverse relationship between GDP and real GDP. So if you want a very, very simple explanation, honestly, it's exactly somewhat similar to your demand. Okay, basically what happens is that uh, if you look at the AD curve, okay, if let's say there's a fall in national income, there'll be a fall in purchasing power, and this is usually due to a rise in prices, right? Because purchasing power is um, uh, everything else held constant, okay? It is only a change in your income. So as a result, your quantity will drop. And so that is why AD shows the inverse relationship between your price and your national output, your real GDP. So that means as real GDP increases, your price drops. And vice versa, as price increases, real GDP drops. Okay, usually we use this one, real GDP drops. Uh, when price increases, real GDP drops. Okay, so then what happens is there's a shift in your AD curve. Okay, so if there's a shift in AD curve, um, usually it occurs okay, due to an increase in AD. If there's an increase in AD, it will shift rightwards. So shift out, same as your demand curve. If there's a fall in AD, it will shift leftwards. Okay, similar to your your uh, demand curve as well. Okay, so then what about the components of AD? Okay, let's go into uh, deeper details. Okay, um, your components of AD, which is basically your CIGX minus M, they essentially shift the entire AD curve. So take it like your non-price factors of demand. Okay, these are kind of like your non-price factors. They shift the entire AD curve. First one we're looking at is consumer expenditure. Uh, consumption expenditure basically um, they are they are, they are being affected okay um, by two main factors. Okay, firstly, I, oh, do I have one more? I may have one more. Okay, we'll see later on. Okay, uh, but firstly, it is consumer expectation about the future. Okay, so this one is very important. Okay, when consumers look at the um have a very very bleak outlook towards the future, what actually happens is that they will want to save more money now. Okay, and anticipation that the future will be bad. Okay, so uh, it's a very important factor. It tends to affect a lot of things. It's the same as demand. So if they anticipate okay, that instead there's rising future incomes and promotions that are coming, they're going to be more confident and optimistic. Okay, hence this will increase your C, increase AD. Okay, everything I'm writing here is all in causal links. Okay, learn to write in causal links when you're looking at econs. It makes things much easier. Okay, on the other hand, if they have a pessimistic outlook about the future, okay, there will be a fall in your current consumption and increase in the savings. So when they increase in savings, um, but a fall in your currency, this will not increase, okay, but this will actually cause a fall. Okay, this will cause a fall in AD. Okay, because of a fall in consumption. So a fall in consumption, help, if you hold everything else, IGX minus M constant, your AD will fall as well. Okay, the other one is interest rates. Okay, interest rates, you'll notice this is a very interesting concept. What happens is that for interest rates, um, when there are lower interest rates, okay, it's actually very, very cheap to borrow money. So your cost of borrowing is actually lower. So as a result, okay, it's cheaper to buy on credit. Okay, especially your big ticket items, okay, things like your credit card. Okay, a low interest rate means that it's very, very cheap to actually just beep, 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 everything to your um, credit card. So as a result, there'll be a rise in consumption of these big ticket items, okay, and this will cause an increase in AD as well. Okay, so at the same time, low interest rates will cause a fall in your returns to savings. Okay, reason being is that when you leave money in the bank, okay, and then you leave it at a very, very low interest rate, okay, it generates nothing, it generates very, very little interest for you. You're not interested in leaving it there. You rather invest in something else or you rather spend it. So there's actually a lower opportunity cost of consuming. This causes your consumption to rise, hence an increase in AD as well. So these are the things that will shift the AD curve outwards or rightwards. Okay, then for investment, KI. So investments, the first one we're going to be looking at is what happens if we have got um, different business expectations, okay? So this one is very similar to cons consumers as well. Okay, if there's increased optimism, uh, op optimism okay, and confidence, your expected returns on certain investments will increase. You expect these investments to increase more, okay, when you are feeling optimistic. 
So at the same interest rates, okay, previously unprofitable investments will become profitable now. Okay, and hence you may choose to increase as a firm your volume of investment. So this will increase your I, hence causing increase in AD as well. Okay, on the other hand, interest rates also same thing, cost of borrowing. Okay, when you've got low interest uh, interest rates, your borrowing money um, for capital will also become lower. So you have a lower cost of borrowing. So at the same expected returns on your investment as well, your profitability will increase. So that will kind of like, you know, you as a firm will be like, oh, since I'm becoming more profitable on this machine, let me invest more in this machine. You'll increase your investments and this will cause AD to increase as well. So it's very, very uh, foolproof investment and consumption. is exactly the same. Good consumer and producer expectations equals to increase in uh, investment and consumption, hence increase in AD. Um, low interest rates is good for both parties as well. Helps them to want to invest more and consume more. Okay, which later on we'll learn your monetary policy in a much later time on the interest rate policy. Okay, on the other hand, government expenditure is um, slightly different. Okay, we're looking at objectives of the government. So if the government, usually, okay, governments usually have a government debt. Okay, this is a result of, oops, sorry. This is usually a result of them wanting to invest more in public goods, merit goods. So if they want to reduce the government debt, okay, let's say, or if they're issuing a lot of subsidies, okay, they may cut on government spending. So this would cause a reduction in your G, which means that they may, re- they may invest less in public goods, invest less in infrastructure, like MRTs, um, buses, okay. This will cause a fall in G and hence a fall in AD in the short run as well. So this is also known as austerity measures, okay? Just a very, very um, complex economics term that you may want to take note of. The other hand, okay, if you're looking at the state of economy as well, if the economy is in a recession, okay, that means that um, entire world is in a recession, okay, you could see a fall in consumption and investment due to pessimism. So there will be a bleak outlook, right? Usually, in fact, now, okay, this period, okay, there's, a, there's bleak outlooks all over the world, okay, because of a potential recession. So as a result, AD will fall. There's a D over here, sorry. Okay, in order to prevent a further fall in your AD, okay, the government can increase your government spending. So things like helping you as a consumer to invest in certain goods and services that can benefit you. Um, this may cause them to increase the government spending. As a result, um, this will stabilize the fall in AD. So AD may either remain stagnant or it may even increase slightly as a result of greater government spending. Okay, next one, you've got export earnings. So exports, like I said, is foreign, uh, I mean, it's domestic goods in foreign countries. So first one you're going to look at is the level of national income of your major trading partners. So when foreigners earn more, they're able to consume more goods and services from us, correct? When your foreigners earn more. So as a result, this will increase your exports and hence increase your AD. So exports, you're not just, I mean, exports, you're looking at goods and services and you're looking at how um, much they're being consumed. Okay, so if your foreigners are being very, very thrifty, they don't really want to spend. Definitely, they will not choose to spend on your goods. They may choose to buy cheaper goods from um, domestically produced um, firms instead. So that will cause a fall in your AD. Okay, on the other hand, exchange rates. Okay, so it's basically the rate at which one currency can be exchanged for another. So if you look at, for example, the ringgit, okay, um, in Singapore, when, when you're in Singapore, right, usually you, you perceive Malaysian um, goods to be much cheaper. Okay, the reason being is because of the exchange rate. However, on the other hand, Malaysians may find it more expensive to buy our goods. Okay, relative. Huh? As a result, they purchase lesser quantity of our exports. This will cause a fall in exports and hence a fall in AD as well. So exchange rates also play a part. Okay, you need to look which one is the stronger exchange rate. So for example, if it's us again, US, we will usually think that US goods are more expensive. We may not want to buy US goods instead. That will cause a fall in their exports and increase in our imports. Um, I mean, as in, in terms of our domestically produced goods that are being bought. So then we move on to import expenditure. Okay, import expenditure is similar, just the opposite. So you're looking at the income level of Singaporeans ourselves. Okay, you're looking at imports, um, whether we are buying foreign goods or not. So when the income level of Singaporeans increase, okay, Singapore will purchase more of both domestically and foreign goods produced. This will cause an increase in your imports and hence a fall in AD. Okay, remember because of your X minus M. So if your M increases, your negative number increases, this will cause a fall in your overall AD. Just take note of this. Exchange rates as well, so similar, I've just explained it. Okay, in the case of US, okay, um, if it appreciates and the, the currency gets stronger relative to us, okay, Singaporeans will find it relatively more expensive to purchase US goods. So if the Singapore demand for US imports are price elastic, okay, there's there's no doubt okay, that we will definitely shift to a to a cheaper alternative. So that means that we could shift to our own domestic goods, okay, instead, hence resulting in a fall in your imports 
hence an increase in AD. Okay, so don't get confused between imports and exports. Okay, imports, always remember, because it is a negative, it is a minus M. So as long as your imports go up, your AD will fall. Okay, and then vice versa. So take note of this part. Okay, so take note. Okay, all in all, right, AD tends to affect real GDP and GPL of an economy in the short run. Usually AD, it, because the thing is that AD occurs on a daily basis. Not on a daily basis, right? Um, almost on like a uh, very, very frequent short run basis. Okay, they only affect real GDP and G GPL in the short run. Later on, you will learn in the next video that AS can affect both short run and long run. AD tends to have more short-term impacts only, okay? Um, so whenever there's a change in AD, you always want to look at the state of the economy. Okay, if the economy is below, near, or at full employment, okay, um, there will be different effects on GDP and GPL. Okay, so as I did on the exam requirements, you will realize that this part ties in a lot to your impact on real GDP and GPL. Okay, so if I were to just draw for you real quick. So this would be real GDP over here. Okay, and this part here will be GPL. So usually you have got your AS curve that goes like that, and then you have got your demand curve, your AD. So let's say if AD is moving, let's say this is below full employment, let's say if it's at or near and it moves up, this would actually cause an increase in your GPL instead. And your GPL, your, G, your GDP will only um, increase very small, by very, very, very small amount as compared to if it was over here. Okay, over here, um, if you were to increase from AD1 to AD2 instead, real GDP will move by a larger extent. Um, but your price may also increase slightly. Okay, so this time we will learn in a later video, not to worry, I'm just drawing here for fun only. Uh, I'll go through in the next, I think the part after ADS, okay, your ex I mean, how to, how to draw your diagrams, what you're looking out for doing your diagrams, and um, how it impacts GDP and GPL. So not to worry, just take note that um, always remember to, to factor into account the state of the economy, whether it is below, at, or near full employment. Okay, so ex explain um, the various factors. I mean, these are your exam requirements. Okay, very, very simple. Okay, just simply explain the various factors affecting AD. So it should be your CIGX minus M. Okay, your, I've already gone through each one in detail. And after that, discuss, okay, if required, how the various factors impact real GDP and GPL, okay, along with any changes in AS. So this one will more, more of be when you're looking for equilibrium quantities, uh, equilibrium output, your uh, equilibrium price. Okay, we'll look at this part in the, I think it's part four or five, I think, of the of this series. Um, but just take note that you may be required to discuss, okay, how does consumer expectations affect AD and hence, how does it affect real GDP? And then after that, how does it affect your macro goals? Okay, so that's what we're always aiming for. Uh, macro Econs is all about aiming for your macro goals. This video is just a concept video. It's for you to understand how does aggregate demand works, uh, work, okay, and then how does AD um, affect, I mean, or how is AD affected, okay, by C, I, G, X, and M. So in the next part, I'll go through AS. Okay, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, let let's me know that you are at least, you know, uh, enjoying this content. Okay, um, uh, be sure to subscribe as well. Okay, it really does help me a lot, please. Okay, if not, um, that's actually all I have. Okay, next video, I'll be going through AS. Exciting part. Okay, exciting video to come. Uh, after that, we'll go through the equilibrium stage for ADAS, how to draw the diagrams. And then we're going to move on into your macro goals. Okay, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.